from the center of the galaxy, this is Force Center, a show about Star Wars pop culture in the ultimate adventure, life itself, and this particular episode is The Bad Batch Report. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, how about this? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for anybody uh, just tuning in for the first time, normally I say bad batch report, and then uh, Ken Knapsack makes a noise that is prominent from the episode. Uh, and I have been misinterpreting almost every week what your noise was, but that sounded like a crosshair processing an emotion. Is that what that was? <laughs> exactly what it is. Uh, I was last week, I jumped the gun on the sound. And uh, I, I was like, this week, I was like, don't do that. Don't, I was so concentrated on that. But I, I forgot I had to come up with something. But there you go. I understand. But that was a real good one. <laughs> Crosshair processing emotion also sounds like him trying to decide what flavor of chips he wants to buy at the store. I, I love yeah. it. It's beautiful. It's true. Beautiful. True. Anyway. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. The person making wonderful noises is Ken Nabsock. Uh, our third partner here on Force Center, Jennifer Landa, is unable to join us today. She is having some life adventures like we talk about uh, covering here on the podcast sometimes. Uh, so we will miss Jennifer's insights, but I'll look forward to catching up with them on next week's episode of The Bad Batch Report. We are going to dive in here. We are talking about two episodes that were broadcast, aired, streamed, released, verbed together. Uh, season three, episode six, Infiltration, directed by Stuart Lee, written by Brad Rao, and of course, ongoing story editor, Matt Machenowitz. Uh, season three, episode seven, Extraction, directed by Saul Ruiz, written by Jennifer Gorbett and Matt Machenowitz. A familiar list of names going back to the old Clone Wars animation days. So not only do the stories continue, but some of the humans involved in well as well. Uh, Ken, what was your overall reaction to this uh, double episode bonanza? You love it? Like it? Struggle with it? Yeah, really loved it. And I will say, though, I, I had some different expectations, something you and I might be talking about here today. And I think I you know, looked at the numbers, looked at the season, looked at the midpoint kind of uh, cliffhanger. And I, th I think we got a lot of that. Uh, but it was it, it played out a little different. Uh, and I enjoyed that a lot. And I enjoyed what it's done. And overall, gosh, I, this this has everything I love about the Bad Batch that I try to explain at lunch conversations or when I run into <laughs> someone and they ask, uh, you, you still watching Star Wars? The, the wonderful action, a somber tone. I don't need Star Wars to have a somber tone, but Bad Batch has this uh, this this streak underneath it of, of, of just somberness and reflection, and I just, I've been, I've been drawn in by that. Uh, it's like a character study, some deep thoughts on Star Wars, and then just some of the best pew, pew, pew action around. I really value uh, the combination this uh, show has found. Yeah, no, I, I'm totally with you. And I think a lot of those attributes were on huge display in these two episodes. I, I'm with you. I think because it, we're kind of reaching the mid season, you got that card that they put out of uh, which episodes are re being released, uh, which day, and you're kind of looking at mid season and, you know, you've got some pops coming of Asajj Ventress and uh, Fennec Shan and Cad Bane. And I still have some uh, Boba Fett hopes, not expect expectations, but hopes. So yeah. I was I was kind of sitting down going, is this one of these uh, these uh, episodes or, or story arcs that is going to uh, break the Star Wars Internet and really inspire conversation because a, a different character popped up or a really new idea or a different twist? So uh, I had to put as soon as the episode started, I was like, oh, <laughs> that that ain't this so mm -hmm. i'm gonna put those expectations aside and really enjoy what is here and i agree with you i think what was here was a big burst of space fantasy sci-fi action you know bad batch did start out in the clone wars days as a, a mm -hmm. fun a team in star wars riff that became this incredibly somber uh, re reflective, uh, sometimes really political show, and sometimes there are episodes without a lot of action. Where, yes, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the biggest action is uh, someone says something emotionally true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it was uh, really great, actually, to have a ton of space fantasy sci fi action, mm -hmm. uh, big, cool action. Uh, I agree with you about the somber tone. I think the music in these particular episodes were really great. I think a thing about the somber tone, we've talked about Bad Batch being a tour of the galaxy just as the Empire's reign begins and, and it dawns on people the mm. deep horror of what they're in for. Mm. Um, 
you and I talk often about growing up in the, the gritty 80s and, and more mm -hmm. reverent 90s, but still sort of like that would be better if everyone was in leather and being sarcastic, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, we were of that generation that a lot of times I think a, a story of a dystopia beginning of, mm -hmm. you know, an authoritarian mm -hmm. regime cracked down would be gritty and hard and Bad Batch mm -hmm. is the reality is gritty and hard, but it's such a different tone to be somber instead of sort of rubbing your nose in the pain. Like we mm -hmm. grew up mm -hmm. so much that like if you're going to tell a dystopian authoritarian story, it's to rub your nose in the pain and to see mm -hmm. how brutal the hero is willing to be. Like mm -hmm. they live in a tough world and they got to kill, you know, mm -hmm. and this is the twist. Uh, so I think mm -hmm. that's maybe mm -hmm. part of what I'm mm -hmm. so appreciating about Bad Batch's somber tone of it's a tragedy that we're living in this dark era, but look at all the ways that we're trying to cling to hope. Look at all the ways we're trying to cling to connection. I think that tone is just kind of precious to me. There was something uh, this week about Batcher, uh, once again, being a key part of the team. And it's, <laughs> you know, it's a dog. Batcher's a dog and, and she's doing some wonderful things. But there's something to me. I was like, as long as there's an animal around, there's there's hope, there's joy, there's whimsy, <laughs> there's connection. And yeah. I was really pulled in by that. I've, I've said I'm now on this like high tension. Don't hurt that dog. Don't hurt that dog. Don't hooch Mike Turner. Don't do it. Don't mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, I felt that this week, and I, I, I it's a, maybe a weird connection to connect to what you're saying, but that's that's I, that's the hope I'm clinging to. But it's true; it's absolutely true. And I think, um, you know, in this great uh, somber episode that was still about hope and people making better choices, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it was just everything about the vibe, the actual look, all that great deep purple, and in the murky jungle and the abandoned mm -hmm. streets and dark sewers, uh, and it's just like. Rex and and now in particular Crosshair, just this these glowing, shining hearts lighting up, you know, a dark, mm. depressed, haunting, haunted battleground space is just like there's a yeah. really cool vibe to that. Yeah, indeed. 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 I'm thinking to a B2 emo having a little bit. A B2 emo does a lot of heavy hope lifting too in <laughs> as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, old yeah. and can't lift as well. Carrying yeah. all the hope. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one of the, can I, I want to touch on this is the overall reaction too. This mm -hmm. is the I put it in the heading of trivia answers, and and this is um, what I love about what the show does uh, so much. It, you know, it's focusing on the clones and, and their collective story. It's touching on the cornerstone ideas of the, of the galaxy this time. We got some great political stuff showing up here too. But mm -hmm. but but this is you know we now know Wolf's showing up, and we're waiting for this, and and we have we have a little bit more of that trivia answer of how Wolf and Gregor ended up with Rex, and 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 that's part of the fun. And I, I'm not saying this is where everyone stops, but we we are drawn in by the big why, and and to. To have a show that understands it's dealing with a how, but giving you the why, that makes it so juicy. And it seems so simple. It's, it's That's something that is, is easy, easy to grasp. I'm not saying deep things here. But I just really appreciate it in this episode of like, what if like, hey, this is how Wolf starts to turn. Oh, that's a great checklist of an idea. And then it, it just has such emotional weight behind it. That's why I just keep coming back to the show. Yeah, absolutely. Wolf's presence was was great. And I know for some people who are, you know, diehard fans of the clones, Wolf is a break the Star Wars internet appearance that people have been mm -hmm. waiting for. So I don't want to uh, undersell that by any means. Yeah. yeah, that was my other big overall thought is this has kind of been a nice rhythm in the Bad Batch show that every mid season we check in with the clones as a whole. Uh, mm -hmm. The Bad Batch are the main characters, but then of course we have Rex, we have characters we're returning to like Hauser, we have Cody popping up and kind of getting an answer to, to where his heart is. Uh, mm -hmm. Now now we have uh, Wolf. Um, and I think it's a big part of what this show is, is the Bad Batch are the main characters, Omega is the, the beating heart, but it is also a show that is totally living up to the promise of the premise of the clones going back to the first broadcast episode of the Clone Wars and Yoda saying, you're all individuals. You all matter. You're not cannon fodder. And mm -hmm. this is one of those uh, two parters that I feel like it's about checking back in with the clones as a whole, because it's their show too. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Season one, you know, we had uh, episode seven battle scars and episode eight reunion was a, uh, was a bad batch meeting up with Rex and dealing with inhibitor chips and 
Crosshair. And then season two, it was, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get the clones rights in the creation of Stormtroopers. Right. That was episode seven, Clone Conspiracy, and episode eight, Truth and Consequences. So we're just a little off on the episode count. But it's mm -hmm. really interesting to look at the structure of the show. And, and I know some people are challenged by Bad Batch and go, well, it's too slow or there are too many filler episodes sure. or what's it about? And to me, it one of the things that it's about is the clones as a whole. And it's meaningful to me that all three seasons have had this supporting pillar right in the middle where we check back in with the clones as a whole. Mm. Love that. Great way to look at it. Uh, all there. And, and premise of the prom promise of the premise is what you said is... Great Peter Gabriel album, I think, from 97. <laughs> and not a phrase I invented by any means. Uh, my, my final overall thought is, especially when Jennifer is here, we've been joking about, like, if the Bad Batch was a cartoon from the 80s and there was a sort of pat moral at the end, like, there's a little, after the credits, Omega was, and what did we learn? Uh, I was amused by the fact that we saw a, amused and horrified, that we saw, sadly, a clone named Nemec die. So I feel like the moral of yeah. this episode would be just don't be named Nemec in Star yeah. Wars. No matter how you spell it, you're not going to make it through. Don't I be should, Nemec. I still would love to know whether there any notes passed around any offices about <laughs> two two characters named Nemec. Different spelling, but two Nemecs, two deaths. Uh, some, uh, someday we're just going to run into a completely different character. Like, oh, your, your name's Poe Dameron, too. And just like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a retired gambler or something. Yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, those are big picture reactions. We really appreciated what these episodes were. So let's get into the why. What were these episodes really about for you, Ken? Where did you go when you were thinking about the big themes or, or the ideas at stake in this two parter? Yeah, there's always a lot to get to, and one that maybe jumps out to me as a as just kind of a, a personal theme and lesson. But I put a, the summary as trust choices and knowing your worth. Sub theme of connection breeds strength, uh, showing up a lot there. Uh, mm -hmm. The big one for me, uh, it, it, the thing about knowing your worth. There's a lot of talk of value, uh, and you can look at it from Omega. But I just again focusing on Crosshair, like I have uh, Crosshair's story becoming one of my favorites in Star Wars and 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 I've you know it's always we had we talked about relatable villains uh, on our most recent uh, Q's episode right and, and it's like I, I don't want to say I relate to Crosshair I'm not blasting commanding officers away I'm not doing anything like that but there's just something where it's ending up that even as much as I was like yeah I like Crosshair I like him now I'm like I really just love the story and I and him having this kind of it, it, it's trust and loyalty comes into play but I, I read it as he 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 knew his worth or discovered his worth. I don't think in the beginning in this idea of I'm a good soldier, I follow orders. We saw that again uh, with Wolf and that can be this little bucket kind of the kind of that you drop yourself in. Um, and it wasn't, I don't take it as just simply as, well, I was loyal, they weren't. I take it as like, I discovered my value and that just might be in skills and we know he's got the hand and who his identity is, 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 is perhaps being robbed because of that, of what he thinks his identity is and he's got to discover the new identity. But but it's like, no, I'm, I'm starting to discover, you know, they, I was replaceable to them and I didn't like that. I di that, didn't, that didn't jive with me and it shouldn't jive with you and that's what turned and that's what turned me. So I found my value and I wanted to accept nothing less than that. And that's a great little life lesson. And it is about the change and the choices. Uh, a lot of it stems from that. And maybe, again, personal connection. But that's why we talk about it. That jumped out to me first. Yeah, no, I, I really, really like what you're saying. I think uh, in some ways so far this season has been crosshairs. And in the last mm -hmm. several episodes have been, okay, can, can he trust Omega? Can he grow and change a little bit and do things in a slightly different way? Can he win back the trust of his squad? And now this episode feels uh, felt like about going a step beyond trusting just his squad mm -hmm. to trusting and being trusted by loyalty and having loyalty to all of the clones as a whole. To the idea of mm -hmm. it's not just the Bad Batch who are my brothers. It's all clones who are my family uh, mm -hmm. was like yet another step in his evolution. And I totally agree with you. I think a big part of that was him being self-reflective on his own value. It's really mm -hmm. interesting for me to think about when he was making his uh, bad choices in season one, when mm -hmm. the squad was doing everything to reach out to him and say, make a different choice, make a better choice, look around you. And he was refusing to change and just being like, I'm a soldier. It's what I know. I'm sticking to it. How thoughtful was he? Or mm. are these realizations that just kind of come, come flowing out of him pretty easily? 
as though he mm. has thought about them, as though he has had shower debates with himself <laughs> about them. We love talking about the things you discover when you're arguing with imaginary people, sometimes yourself in the shower. Maybe <laughs> other people do that someplace else, but we do it in the shower. Yeah, um, yeah. But like when he just, you know, busts out with the loyalty uh, meant something to me, but with the empire it didn't go both ways. I realized how disposable I was. Mm. Mm. Clearly he was having those epiphanies in the moment, but his thoughts and his feelings about himself and yeah. why he made the choices he made seem so organized. They mm. feel like a person who was reacting just instinctually knee jerk season mm -hmm. one when he's making his bad choices. Mm -hmm. And now he mm. has take, taken the time to reflect. And, and I think that is to your point, a sign of value when you mm -hmm. say it matters what I do. Uh, yeah. It, it matters who I I'm worth giving reflection to because I, maybe he yeah. didn't even feel like that at the beginning of the season when he was telling Omega mm -hmm. that he wasn't worth being rescued, that he was right. just from his eyes in his eyes, he was just an untrainable beast like Batcher. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't domesticate me. I'm, I should die from my sins. Yeah. And now he's like, yeah. no, I have value. I should live. I should be able to explain to myself and others why I did what I did. Yeah. I really like you bringing back, uh, him in imprisoned and 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 how this choice i'll even take it back to episode one of the entire series i think he has a thought of what his value is at that point right like he's like you know and that's part of what's you call it reactionary like no we're all the best of the best here and we're following orders and that's part of i'm part of that's my value and it's changing slowly and what i love this series as it comes to just crosshair is is we talked about the last couple of weeks of Taking a Star Wars redemption story, something we are rather familiar with and will continue to be familiar with because mm -hmm. redemption is at the heart of a lot of Star Wars stories, uh, and just slow churning it and 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 tracking when he's come to these moments and realizations. I wrote, wrote down the line, this is when Hauser's going at him, whether you believe me or not, it's true. It's just mm -hmm. a surface line maybe about the situation, but like he, that's to me him kind of saying, I know who I am. I know who I am, and mm -hmm. I don't need you right now. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to have you on my team, but I, I don't need that from you because I know what I'm worth and I won't accept anything less. It's pretty Zen for the crosshair that we met who in, in, in the first season, mm -hmm. who I think was just acting pretty instinctively in, in, you yeah. know, knee jerk and, and to make real world comparisons. It is like when, you know, people get interviewed at a rally or an event and sometimes they can articulate why they feel strongly about something. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's just, it, it is this is yeah. what I do. It is truth. And I don't, uh, I, I can't discuss it or articulate it. Uh, yeah. And I feel like that's maybe where Crosshair was at the beginning. And now he's at this place where like, I can discuss it. I can articulate it. And I can't, I mean, it's, it's pretty Jedi for him to be like, I can't control whether you believe me. Mm. It is the truth. And you are not going to move me off of that is, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. One of the other things that I really, really yeah. valued in this episode that goes along with the idea of, of value is um, this idea of sort of facing your reflection, of facing yeah. a, a darkness. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's it's just a kind of plot line, but I also feel like it's a theme statement early on when uh, uh, Rex and his clones capture the clone operative mm -hmm. and said, in it's uh, the I believe Samson who says he's one of those shadows we keep mm -hmm. running into. And we always discuss, you know, some of the stuff that we love to talk about is it's right there on the surface. We're not claiming that, you know, it's yeah. <laughs> hidden layers deep, but everybody in this episode is people reckoning with which side am I going to be on former adversaries, former, you know, friends mm -hmm. who have become adversaries. There's a lot of, I'm facing my shadow. I was with the Republic. Yeah. You were a separatist. Let's face that shadow. Uh, all of us as clones are being, literally hunted by shadow versions of ourselves. And then I think that uh, we'll, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the standoff between Rex and Wolf, which way is this going to go? Yeah. Are they going to be friends? Are they going to be enemies? That's, that's uh, so much going on with this idea of facing your reflection. But in terms of Crosshair, I feel like as the heart of the episode and the thing that got me super thrilled watching it is getting down to the, the, the deep purple darkness and mm -hmm. smoke of that jungle and crosshair being this like just i i i know who i am i know what's most important to me right. it's keeping omega safe period that's what yeah. matters to me and i will risk anything for it 
And here's this clone operative, this shadow, who mm -hmm. we can talk much more about the whole fun canon speculation of who is that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, maybe he is literally a clone of Crosshair. There, his, his voice mm -hmm. sounds a little Crosshair-like. Mm -hmm. Whether or not he's literally a clone mm -hmm. of, of Crosshair, we'll discuss later on. But for the, the point of talking about themes and ideas, I think in these episodes, symbolically, he is Crosshair from season one. He's lanky. <laughs> he's got this the sniper rifle. He is uh, these direct comparisons are drawn where yeah. uh, Crosshair is talking about them trying to bring him into this program. And he said, you know, I, I couldn't get in line. And he says, yeah. being defective is in my nature. And then that whole second episode is Wolf trying to get this shadow operative to, you know, not be defective, to fall in line. Right. And right. he keeps going rogue just the way Crosshair defined himself is this mm -hmm. sort of lone wolf who's going to go his own way and is going to obsess on the objective and get it done no matter what. And I feel like Crosshair on a on a real practical level in that second episode is absolutely being strategic about I will risk my life. I will keep Omega safe and I'll keep everybody else safe. I'll be the one to take this this guy on and draw him out and all that. Mm. But it felt like to me on like a deep emotional sim symbolic level of Crosshair turning to face his reflection, turning to face his shadow. This is who I was and I hate it. Mm. And I'm not going to let this image of who I was, this shadow of me, kill people I care about. I'm going to face my shadow. It, it feels like mm -hmm. a, a, a defeating of oneself in almost a, you know, a, a metaphorical, philosophical way. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're deep into English lit and critical studies classes here right now. I love this. By the way, I don't think I'm going to let you sneak by without highlighting your excellent deep purple smoke on the water. Reference that you kind of worked in there. Um, yeah, I wrote down this whole section of crosshair versus his choices. And, and yeah, everyone uh, clone operative is, is kind of the word right now. I keep calling them shadow clones because you're absolutely right. I love even the one shot. Uh, when uh, I, I, I've called him Shadow Assassin 3. I don't, I don't know. We'll wait for the actual numbers. But where the, like the door kind of opens as you see him sneak by. And it's just like it, literally these shadows haunting all of them. But the, the scene in the water, the scene in the waterfall, uh, which I, I will say for about two seconds, I thought, is this, is this the end of Crosshair? Uh, I was so pulled in by what was going on. I, I, mm -hmm. I, 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 we'll talk about canon and predictions and stuff later. Uh, but I'm with you. It is. It's not unlike Yoda fighting, uh, you know, uh, his his dark clone version <laughs> in the in the uh, season six of Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it had that vibe. But I, it, it, Crosshair versus all of his choices, as if you know the choices are saying I was always going to win. The bad choices were always going to win. You had a chance to be one of us. Is the line, and mm -hmm. and, and Crosshair, um, Crosshair defeats him with help right like oh like, yeah yeah no I mean, it's, I think it's a connection theme too absolutely but i loved all that yeah. in play. loved all that in play. i'm with you yeah no i think you know it's in so many you know real world myths it's been built into many uh you know bits of mm -hmm. lore everything from lord of the rings and the, the ring corrupting you to you know mm -hmm. the the mm -hmm. lore of twin peaks is you must pass through the black lodge and face your shadow self uh, uh with perfect courage on on your way to the white lodge on your on your journey mm -hmm. to your true and full realized self and it is it's what i continue to love about bad batch is, is again i think you know you can have fun discussing these things and intellectualizing them you know yeah. the way that, that we are and the way we like to and the way so many other fans do and bring up great things in our comments but it's also you just feel it on a in a gut level. You don't ever have to have this discussion to sort of feel it, to yeah. feel like that's what it is to turn and face your worst choices, to to, you know, face your shadow self with perfect courage on your way to mm -hmm. full enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But when people ask. You're still going with that Star Wars thing, Ken, huh? <laughs> it's these kind of moments, these kind of discussions. It's cool. It's fun. It's a fight on a waterfall. It's it's sniper on sniper. And to your theory, I mean, the the shadow clone is is he's hitting targets and Crusher isn't. And but mm -hmm. but anyways, to to, to connect it, uh, you know, we're all wrestling with shadows. Yeah, that's why we love it. Yeah, and Crosshair's getting a little better. Plenty of action uh, beats to yeah. talk about. Yeah. Um, 
you have brought up this idea that it is this very classic Star Wars theme. Uh, uh, that connection uh, is what wins the day in this episode. Mm -hmm. I really think that's true. And I think that's part of like, that's what Crosshair risks in facing his his shadow self is mm -hmm. his, his very uh, realistically risking death. Um, yeah. There's yeah. the there's the idea in this episode that's stated pretty clearly about loyalty and uh, Crosshair saying loyalty meant something to me, but with the Empire didn't go both ways. I, I realized how disposable I was and Hauser saying you're not the only one. Um, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. they're talking about loyalty. They're soldiers. That's a way that they process their world, their life. Uh, but a lot of what they're talking about when it comes to loyalty is to me, it's trust, it's connection. It's right. uh, being able to rely on someone else. Uh, and mm -hmm. for me, it, 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 it's very apparent. Hauser doubts him. Hauser thinks he's a spy and then Hauser saves him. It's not, it, it's not yeah. subtle, but the yeah. beats along the way, I think are really rewarding that mm -hmm. crosshair has allowed himself this connection with Omega and that connection is really highlighted these two episodes, everything from Omega playing with the toothpick to his extremely funny version of caring about her. Yeah. Got your crossbow. <laughs> <It's like laughs> the most loving thing that Crosshair can say. Uh, and then Hauser seeing that. And I think mm -hmm. um, the episode doesn't really do anything to remind us, but I think if you're, if you want to be a, uh, deep dive person or Google and remind yourself, you know, Hauser was in a position to betray a child in his charge of Hera. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's Crosshair's connection to Omega that Hauser sees that Hauser goes, Oh, I see myself in that. Mm -hmm. He's a guy who's trying to make a better choice about a child and about a family of the Sindulas that I should have been loyal to. I see who this guy is. And mm -hmm. then that those layers and layers of connections are what save Crosshair, uh, very apparent. But I also just think it's really cool that um, mm -hmm. Crosshair in the early seasons has been afraid, angry that he should be abandoned, that loyalty should just be an unquestioned thing. If I give my loyalty to the Bad Batch and politics be damned, kid be damned, change of government be damned, they should just be loyal to me. Mm -hmm. And they kind of keep trying to say to him that first season, like, we, we can't just be loyal to you, dude. We, we, you know, there, there are problems here, but, but we do love you and we want you to come with us. And he keeps saying no. So I think mm. his great fear is being abandoned, rejected. Mm. And I think he has trust now that, that, that the squad, the bad batch has his back, but I thought it was so great that it wasn't Wrecker or Hunter, you mm. know, mm. or even Rex really who rescued him, that it was Hauser that it was this guy that he built a connection with because it, feel, it makes me feel like um, like Crosshair's trust is now extended and his connection is now extended beyond the batch to mm. the clones in general, to all of his brotherhood. And he feels like his loyalty to his brothers, all of the clones is going to be reciprocated. And he took that risk and found it out. Yeah. I love, I love all, the stuff you're saying here, and, and Hauser's a pretty inspired choice. Whether it was planned way back when, or mm -hmm. whether they're along the way, they're like, hey, here's where we're going, and you know, it would be a good fit. I love it. You're bringing in, uh, the, you know, the Ryloth stuff is mentioned, but it's like, that's the action that's mentioned, and more than the hair of it all. I, I, mm -hmm. I really like what you're saying, and how it connects to the idea of, of even even Crosshair's line to him earlier of, you know, uh, uh, believe, believe me or not, it's true, of just this, like, my actions are telling the story right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I, and that's all I can do. Um, I, I, I thought of, you know, we got Wrecker uh, last uh, last time out. Yeah, Omega likes him good enough for me, right? And, mm -hmm. and that's why we love Wrecker. But that's not going to be the case for everyone. And, and Hauser uh, doesn't know Omega as well, doesn't know these, the, this batch. So to see it in the actions, to see it with the kid, to see it have great purpose. Uh, it made me again love love Crosshair even more. It is it is a a hound like turn for me <laughs> to mm -hmm. go from Sandor Kaglade is Kaglade. Yeah, yeah, he's great. He's cool, but you know, to to loving that guy because of his long play, his struggle. Yes, I'm talking Game of Thrones again. I apologize, <laughs> but but Crosshair is having that effect on me. Of just now now I want to go back and study it all a little bit more than I did back then. Yeah, and I continue to just have you know I have various guesses, hopes, uh, mm -hmm. dreams what might happen with the rest of the show, the rest of the season. 
Uh, but uh, all the choices across these three seasons mm-hmm. make me just have a lot of faith in uh, the, that the story is going somewhere interesting because I think yeah, yeah. there was some consternation throughout the first couple of seasons of what's the, what's the deal with Crosshair? You know, are, yeah. is he a part of the show? Is he not? Are we ever going to get back to him? Uh, is he ever yeah. going to get back? And it, it has really paid off and it's going to make watching all those other Crosshair episodes spread across season one, season two, just resonate so much more. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also want to talk about it, the idea that that uh, you have brought up about sort of um, why people are fighting, what are they, what they're fighting for? What thoughts do you have about that big picture idea? You talk about just in, in, in the galaxy at large here with some of the political stuff, or yeah, just I, in general? I, yeah. Well, I guess I just I felt like uh, across the board there was this uh, the loyalty stuff and the connection stuff was pretty explicit, but I think right. it 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 funneled into uh, how are how are you making the choice to be loyal? Is it a just a knee jerk? I'm I I've picked a team and I'm side A or side B. There's a lot of talk about what side you're on. Yeah, and then I think there's all these different conversations between these these shadow selves, these mm-hmm. friends who might be enemies and vice versa, uh, where some of our characters have clarity on. I'm on a specific team for a reason and I have clarity of what it is. Whereas other characters seem caught up just in I'm on team A or I'm on team B and everybody should be loyal to my team. And I have not done any work to examine. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's, it's just us against them. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful uh, comment uh, on all of this. Yeah. They're, they're not insurgents. They're clones, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. This might be a, a, a theme of, um, it, it's definitely a connection. I, I even put to the uh, it's, speaking of musical references is like this whole episode had an opposites attract Paula Abdul MC Scat Cat uh, vibe <laughs> for those going back to 1988 and forever your girl. Great album. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I write Chuchi and, and, and Sing and Crosshair and Shadow uh, Crosshair and Hauser, Rex and Wolf, the clones versus the clones at the end. But but it, to me, it might be a little bit about that opening scene too of communication and finding not just common ground. Uh, they got the political ramifications. Uh, Palpatine is afraid, or as I wrote down, a scared of uh, the planets and people uniting. They'll be a threat mm-hmm. to him. He's at a point in his run where he can't just strike out, right? He's got to have some kind of support. He's still playing the politics. Just a little bit of sheave left in old Palpatine's robes right now. Um, but I, I, how it, that comes down to maybe the value, uh, your value and what you value, discovering that. Asking yourself those tough, tough questions, looking at things differently. You've got a separatist and, and, and a former Republic senator sitting across from each other and, and having to say, great, that's what the title was. But what did that mean to us? Uh, and, and finding out who we are, what we value, and, and then the why might uh, emerge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I wanted more of that opening conversation, quite frankly, but I love the, the pace of the episode. But that's, that's where I start this conversation about the comment on all of this. Yeah. The why. I would love more of that, and I think it was left on a cliffhanger, and we're going to talk about it more in the, yes. in the canon section of, where is yes. that going? Why is that scene here? Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like that scene is there to set up more storytelling in the future is a part of the answer, which we'll get to <laughs> in the in the canon section. But in the terms of, like, the sort of themes and ideas of, like, you know, uh, uh, primacy and recency uh, are... are I talked about as psychological factors of what sticks with you is the beginning and the end, uh, you know, and, and mm-hmm, sometimes mm-hmm. the struggle with storytelling when people think all of the meaning is just contained in the end. But the that's the recency part. The primacy part is mm. uh, how does the very beginning of something set the stage? And the fact that these this two parter starts with people who were bitter enemies and fought a horrific war going a little bit like what are the real now that that's all gone that's all done and now we both have a different problem a common enemy that's mm-hmm. fine but that's not enough because uh, thing mm-hmm. is like but here's what i actually believed like mm-hmm. m- maybe i i don't know how much clarity chuchi has of like in dooku was on <laughs> Palpatine, like right right, you know, right exactly like i don't know how much i don't know how much they entirely understand that they were played yeah but it's yeah. it, 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 interesting to me for Singh to say, well, m- I had a clear value I was fighting for, a specific reason, a belief, mm-hmm. and it is more independence. And mm-hmm. Chuchi is basically like, I have come around to 
agreeing with what you actually want, with the reason you are fighting. There's no team A, team B. Mm -hmm. There's no us against them because we happen to have different jerseys or, you know, you know, born across, a, a, you know, an imaginary yeah. dividing line that we made up. What do we both want? And if we're aligned on what we want and what we value, then we're good to go. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that continues throughout uh, this entire episode. Uh, Rex yeah. saying Rex's kind of opening gambit to the clone operative that the capture is uh, no matter what they did to you, no matter what you've done, you're still a clone. You're still one of us. There's mm -hmm. no team A or team B. We're all clones. We're all brothers. Mm -hmm. We're all family is the argument that yeah. Rex is making because uh, he knows they've probably been don't have anything they believe in. They've been brainwashed and tortured. Um I, I think all that to me comes this great uh, head at the end uh, with the confrontation between Wolf and Rex, mm -hmm. where there's all that those great shots of both ships landed with the light Beautiful. pouring out of them and the and the teams Beautiful. pouring out and the teams facing off and it it and it looks like well <laughs> yeah. somebody flip a coin to see who goes first in the yeah. team A team B battle right. <laughs> And that's Kickoff what they're both is here. Yep. They're mm -hmm. both poised to fight yeah. to fight because it's because they're on different sides. And so we fight. Uh, mm -hmm. And instead, Rex is like, no, 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 no. What do you want? What mm -hmm. do you believe in, Wolf? Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, open your eyes. You're hunting a child, you know, as your yeah. brother. I'm asking you to do the right thing. And Wolf. Wolf has that clarity, like we're talking about with Crosshair, to ask myself, what do I want? Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. uh, they're not clones, they're insurgents. It's a child. I'm not doing this. And then that wrap-up scene with uh, with uh, Rex and Hunter chatting, mm -hmm. I think it's just a great you know, reminder that our heroes are clear on why they're fighting. Mm -hmm. You know, Hunter is fighting for Omega's safety. Uh mm -hmm. And Rex is really clear on he's not going to give up until his brothers are all free. That's what he's sure. fighting for. And they're both compelled. Mm -hmm. So we end on, you know, a little bit of a cliffhanger there about figuring out Hunter feeling responsible to figure out why Omega is wanted so badly by the Empire. But it's an ending that's about clarity of purpose and that that is more important than randomly being team A or team B. I love it all, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to dangerously spin it off into too many <laughs> real-world things. <laughs> it, it's it's about common ground, communication, and, and the value, and, 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 and allowing yourself to, you know, not just change opinions, but to – because you might strengthen your opinions. But also, uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't, I'm, yeah, I don't want to run head on back into family arguments that I've had. Mm. But just like, hey – that question that, that I love what you're pointing out at the end of Rex just said, who are you? Like, mm -hmm. What, who are you? Tell you're, me. You're a soldier of the empire. Great. Got but it. What, what are the beliefs attached to that? Yeah. You know, who are you beyond that? Again, going yeah. back to what I said at the beginning, that's your title. Got it. Soldier of the empire. Who are you behind that? We all have mm -hmm. some sort of value. We all have some sort of perspective. What do you want to do with all that? Yeah. And, and I feel like the story of star Wars is um it's a great space fantasy uh but i do think it reflects things that are going on right now in the world and i think things that have gone on for a long time because i think uh spinning out from the you know why are you fighting do you have clarity on it or is it just team a or team b what is valuable to me about that is in the context of the star wars story uh all of these various people who could maybe be aligned are opposed, mm -hmm. but why? How did they get positioned that way? And who benefits from them just being team A and team B? Well, yeah. Palpatine, uh, he gets more powerful. He gets more, you know, uh, uh, wealthy in, in every way. And I do mm -hmm. think that extends to real life. I think mm -hmm. we have uh, an unfortunate, I think, knee jerk instinct sometimes to sort of team up and <laughs> mm -hmm. sure uh, and be uh, be against the other mm -hmm. um and i think that's something that we all need to always be aware of uh, at least mm -hmm. I, I feel that for myself and and yep. watch out for that because it can be destructive but then there's this other part of it that i think star wars does so well with palpatine of sure that might be just a, a natural instinct that we have to be like you know mm -hmm. 
I remember riding in the elevators at uh, Dragon Con, the big convention uh, in Atlanta, and those elevators get packed. Mm. And I remember being both amused and frightened because you, you wait for a long time, random assemblage of people, some of them dressed as He-Man, some of them is like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> sexy C-3PO, whatever, yeah. just this random group of people who happen to, let's be honest, many of them drunkenly get on this elevator together. And then the door opens for other people to get on the elevator and everybody inside the elevator groans that other people would want to come on. It's like, that's how yeah. fast in us versus them psychology can develop. <laughs> of, we are now the community of the people who are on the elevator and those that's invaders amazing. who are now trying to get on the elevator are others. They that's are amazing. outside the elevator people. And like, that was us like literally yeah. 30 seconds ago, just randos who wanted to get on this elevator, but that group identity <laughs> developed so fast. So anyway, I, th I think it's a danger for us in general, but I think often mm -hmm. in real life, it happens what I think is happening here of, if all these characters yeah. chase down, well, why do we need to fight? Who benefits? It's always Palpatine. So I yeah. think this natural, you know, not great instinct to to team up and, and face an other uh, mm -hmm. is often exploited for somebody yeah. else's benefit. And it is not good for you. I, yeah. I don't think those shadow operatives can articulate yeah. why it is good for them that they are. I don't think that the it's whoever that per, that shadow operative who is, you know, yelling at Crosshair, like, you know, you had a yeah. chance, you could have joined us. I, if, you know, if Crosshair had been in a position to say, <laughs> not fighting for his life, if he had been in a position to say like, Cool. What would I be fighting for? What do you believe? I don't think that guy could have articulated that. He's a right. pawn in the yeah. us against them war mm -hmm. that Palpatine is exploiting. I love it. You also, number one, I hopefully, hopefully have created a great stand-up bit or monologue for yourself about the elevator politics, but also <laughs> you've given me a, a good example to give my immigrant father when he also complains about immigrants. So, um, <laughs> sorry, but uh, I'm going to mark that down. But yeah, no, uh, I, I love I love that uh, Bad Batch has been doing this all along about what is, again, again, it's not just trivia answers. It's not just a simple, you and I have described it as a tour around the galaxy, and that's mm -hmm. a real uh, packaged up way to look at it. But, but stopping along the way to ask, what 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 are you? What are you bringing mm -hmm. to this? Who are you behind that title? Uh, season uh, two, episode three. You know the, the everything mm -hmm. about. Uh, uh, we're not here to discuss politics, of course, of course you're not, because mm -hmm. you, 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 you you lose it. <laughs> you, you got nothing it. to discuss. Yeah, you got nothing to discuss. Uh, I love all them. Yeah, all, all wrapped yeah. up in a in a in a tea in a nice high t high tension tea, and then a a waterfall fight. <laughs> we can all see ourselves in the waterfall fight. Yeah. Staring up at our a masked shadow version of ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. well, thank you for indulging me on uh, uh, dabbling wow. in the dangerous uh, waters of real world. But but that's to me the, why yeah. these shows have value and why thinking about the ideas behind them have, has value. Yeah. No, I know. Uh, I'm with <laughs> all right. Any uh, <laughs> any other big picture theme thoughts before we take a quick break? Uh, I think we touched them all. I yeah. I had some simple. You know, I, I I put in the empire, you fall to your presumed death alone. But in the quote unquote rebellion, you have friends pulling you back from the brink. That's the way mm. I looked at it. But also, I did write. Uh, we touched on it, but I just. This whole episode also was trust falls in action to me. Just when you're yeah. at a corporate retreat and people just fall <laughs> back, just fall back. You're only going to find out, I guess, until you do. And, and everyone is measured by their actions. That's what Hauser, I love you know, what you're saying about Hauser looking back on uh, what he could have and maybe should have done with Hera. That's Hauser mm -hmm. versus his choices. Crosshair mm -hmm. versus his choices and the choices to come. Uh, you know, we got more choices in front of us always. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, that's why I think Wrecker is, he's passed that trust fall test a long time ago. You going to get serve me food, Gregor? I, you got me. You got me. <laughs> trust the spicier fall the better. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that. That spicy food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I absolutely love that. Uh, and love that you bring it up. And I, I guess that was one final thought for me is um, it is so easy to say this sort of like it comes up again in Star Wars that, hey, connection is stronger. Um, mm -hmm. But it is about trust falls, like you're saying. And it's it's incredibly vulnerable and frightening to trust other people. And I was struck by that in this episode, too, of like uh, 
that scene with Crosshair and Omega with him kind of, you know, checking that she's everything's okay and to stick close mm -hmm. with them. Do you have your crossbow or you use that too much weight for you? Mm -hmm. It was yeah. funny and endearing, but it was also mm -hmm. like Crosshair allowing himself to care about Omega that much is vulnerability because how mm -hmm. devastated is he going to be if he loses her or if he fails mm -hmm. her? And this, that's the strength, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, we talk about the strong silent type going it their own way, but that's such a great picture of that's even more frightening and therefore takes more strength to care about this, this kid while you're yeah. running through a, a <laughs> jungle, a uh, deep purple yep. smoke on the water <laughs> jungle. And welcome to the jungle. Um, yeah, no, I really agree. That was, it was a great scene. Again, the relationship just rewarding. And I did have, you know, we can talk about it, but like I have Hunter and the way to protect an Omega too. I'm, uh, I'm curious if it plays out, how much it plays out uh, of, of Hunter having to give up what he thought was part of his identity. He's there, here, here to protect Omega, but here, here for the bigger picture. Um, and even Rex kind of says, you know, you, can, you can't leave, you know, you, you're not, you're here. <laughs> like, you, you know, you, we, we're aware of what we're fighting for, but I, there's I'm not, I'm not suggesting tension. But just that there's these moments I'm picking up on where it's like hey, this is she's got the toothpick uh, to, to be like Omega now, just like she used to try to be like Hunter. And that might be part of what Hunter has to accept as he changes and, and grows and looks to the future. Yeah, no, it is. It is really like Hunter's like, oh, I got to be a dad for like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was I was scared of it. And then I really liked it. And that only lasted for five seconds. And now she's changing yeah. on me. <laughs> yeah, could be. Could be. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to change on you by taking a quick break. We will be back in just a moment. And we are back to continue our discussion of The Bad Batch, uh, Season 3, Episode 6 and 7, Infiltration. And what's the opposite of that? Extraction. That's right. Um, we were going to talk about some of the uh, the big canon ideas. Uh, at, at first glance, I was like, oh, yeah, they're not a lot of big picture things. And then like, no, there is actually quite a lot of seeds of big ideas. And then, of course, mm -hmm. just all the delicious uh, uh, clone history and future and yes. <laughs> track and all that. Um, but I want to start with, I think, what might be one of the big talking points of this episode is the the mystery of the clone, um, mm -hmm. of this clone operative. Uh, we've got clarity now that we have seen that there's a whole team of these clones, that we've, we've seen them, two of them at least, uh, die now in these last two seasons. Um, mm -hmm. But now we're spending a little bit more time with this one this clone operative who we, you know, really saw survive. Uh, I thought it was interesting that we did spend a lot of time with this clone. And even to the point where to me, it went beyond tension of we're watching the hunter, the bad guy, uh, not hunter. Uh, we're watching them be stalked by the bad guy. But like, by the time we're getting into that second episode and we're watching that clone operative, like adjust his wounded shoulder and have a limp, but go on mm -hmm it felt to me like we're starting to build empathy to this character. We're starting to build a relationship where we yes. want to know the deal. And by the end, I was like, take off. Like I, I thought Crosshair was going to reach up from the water and take off the damn helmet. I yeah. thought when that final shot, when he crawled yeah. in the rock, he was going to take off the damn helmet. Uh, for me, yeah. it is dancing a little bit. Like I have so much trust from, from this team, mm -hmm. but I feel like the, the kind of just simple murder mystery. I want the answer. Who mm -hmm. is it? Mm -hmm. uh, question is, is, is raising in, in tension and focus. So that's my opening thought about the mystery of the clone. We can get into details, but what, what are your thoughts on, on who the clone is and the tension of that? Yeah, no, it's, it's, I'm right there with you. Even especially the, the waterfall moment. I was like, if this is, if this is tech 2.0 or, or, or crosshair like this is the moment mm -hmm. where this could happen and it didn't but i i want to hi highlight uh, what you highlighted the the empathy thing of the arm and you know certainly you can make a comment on the empire you know controlling you and the, i you could also say maybe was it some form of ai helping is this an ai discussion but uh i i i went where you went of just like this guy can't even be in pain <laughs> Mm -hmm. like, he can't even be owned that when it happens. He presses some buttons and, and it, it doesn't fix him. It, it it helps, but he's still limping forward. He's he's been through a lot. But uh I'm with you. Uh I, I think too, I think you and I are in agreement of um 
It's always fun. I'm wondering, and we're having fun, and I'm not done discussing it. But like, you know, Ahsoka had a little bit of that of of who is that? Well, it's a smoke demon monster held together by witches. Don't worry about it. Like, like, and we can mm-hmm. get lost in the in the speculation. Um, but it doesn't mean it isn't damn fun. And I, I really, I, I've been I've been joking about the tech two point based on one of the things you know you had maybe thought about going into the season. I won't even call it a prediction. It, that doesn't track for me. Uh, it was me mostly winking, nodding, and 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 nudge, nudge. Know what I mean on on it? But like I, the, I don't think it's cross. It. I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be Crosshair's face, but just where you're, you're. It, it is absolutely lining up to be something related to him and this whole program being part of what they all could have been and what all you know and and, and this program being about identity being erased in, mm-hmm. in the clones as they try identity to being erased in in the the comfort of having like obviously uh we all want agency we all want yeah uh freedom but i think there's a lot of great storytelling that is about the temptation to relieve ourselves of the burden mm-hmm. of making all those choices of identity and yep. i think that was a little bit going on with crosshair in the first season of i don't want to face all those difficult choices i just want to say i'm a soldier and i follow orders and i get my value from being the best yeah. at what i do and being loyal to my squad mates right next to me and it's a really simple life because i have three rules to follow they're rarely in contradiction mm-hmm. with one another and mm-hmm. i'm free of the burden of my agency yep. and yeah that might be interesting if if, if the these shadow clones are a a representation mm-hmm. of that of the life you thought you wanted where you you followed orders and so you didn't have to question everything and yep. even with all the doubt and the pain and the fear of connection and agency they're like look so looking at those shadow operatives and going i can't believe we were that i can't believe yeah. we were ever close to that and we don't ever want to be that again that that could be the meaning of the revelation of the identity yeah, yeah. The, these these shadow clones are this, you know, uh, m- moral inaction leads you to only take from the world around you, not build it up. It's just it's it's and to make better choices beyond it. And and, and uh, I can see that kind of being a play and at stake. Yeah, for for the uh, just straightforward identity, which I w- regardless of what the reveal mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. I, I trust them to have meaning to it. Um, I just yeah. feel like it, it it's, you know, a, a thing where it's it's simmering and it's building. I I felt like, well, if it's a clone of Crosshair, I think that would be meaningful of they couldn't get Crosshair to break and mm-hmm. join this program, but they could make a new version of him who is, you know, fa- falling yeah. in line up to a point because he's also a rogue, which, you know, even yeah. though we don't agree with what he's doing or like he's shooting down our friends that we yeah. want to escape there is still this tendency i think in western storytelling to root for anybody who's like yeah they're going their own yeah. way they're a rogue <laughs> right and the amount of times wolf's just like ah this rogue yeah. you know like yeah. that great line about like why is the spire burning when we want to take the target alive like because you're a rogue <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of that. Uh, give me your badge, McGarnacle kind of vibes from Wolf to him. Like, <laughs> McGarnacle. Yeah. We'll deal with this later. <laughs> McGarnacle, you're giving me your badge. Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I feel like if the revelation is that he was Crosshair, why not have that pop when you already have that beautiful image of Crosshair yeah. underwater, drowning for his beliefs, looking up mm-hmm. at the horror of who he used to be. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't have you had that image then if it was just mm-hmm. crosshair? Um, if it is a clone mm-hmm. of tech, I understand uh, spacing it out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And having that be a different issue that they deal with at a different time. I, yeah. I even entertained a wild theory that it's uh, maybe all of the clones mixed together, or at least tech and crosshair. Is it is it cross tech? Because they have <laughs> no That's it. samples from both of them. Um, cross tech's one of those mid '90s GI Joe figures that you're like, they're still making Joes. All right, <laughs> cross tech. Uh, okay, cross-tech. not sure about that. Okay. Cross tech. Um, beyond mm-hmm. crosshair or tech, it, I I think part of what why I'm obsessing on it a little bit is in terms of existing clones who could have been turned. I feel like we're out of meaningful options. Like if Wolf hadn't yeah. shown up, fine. If mm-hmm. Cody mm-hmm. hadn't shown up fine if gregor hadn't shown up fine like 
Um, the, Fireball. Oh, Fireball. <laughs> Fireball is new and yeah. it, it appears to be no longer with us. Um, <laughs> rest, rest in spicy rest food. Um, yeah, but do, yeah. do you know what I mean? It, it is starting to feel like yeah, uh, a, a murder mystery without a good suspect left. Yep, yep. Uh, I, I think you're right, and and, and there's you know the, the leader in the betting clubhouse would be you know might just be generic clone number eight. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. in this case, number three, because you know we had this this play out before twice now, right? Well, a little, little mm-hmm. bit going in. I think a lot of the the first clone we saw. I don't remember the trailer shots, but we had obviously we're talking about the speculation we had coming into the season. Then the one last season, and the mask comes off, and it's like oh, we don't know this guy. I, I still think that might be the answer with these big whys behind it, but there's something tantalizing about uh, cross tech, or actually for me, just cross hair. Add uh, the o. Yeah, add the O. Add the O. Cross hair. In, in it, yeah. In it, it. I think that's the thing that I want to brace for. Of yeah, it's just a. a, mm-hmm. a, a clone it's it's toe hair because he had a lot of toe hair whatever um but and the meaning is being built up in what we're seeing now and Mm -hmm. they're eventually going to have you know a a confrontation with this character and maybe it's as simple as that and that's fine yeah but i mean yeah him emerging from the uh from the from the water um yeah had great 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 intrigue behind it i'm excited Mm -hmm. that it's there Mm-hmm. Uh, we have been checking in on uh, Omega's fate and uh, the whole mm-hmm. Project Necromancer uh, slow roll. Um, the cliffhanger of this episode, uh, the emotional cliffhanger uh, of the second episode was Hunter being told by Rex that he needs to attack the problem directly. You can't yeah. just go hide. This isn't going to end mm-hmm. until you figure out why Omega is so important to the Empire, which I, you know, from our conversation, I appreciate us. You know, we're talking a lot about the clones having yeah. taken the time to figure out the why and Rex saying like, yeah, you, you got to know the why. Um, so it is putting our heroes on this sort of a, 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 a attack vector to cross into project necromancer. <laughs> I mean, this is a cliffhanger mm-hmm. Rex mm-hmm. said to Hunter, you yeah. got to figure out that they think uh, that mm-hmm. they can make emperor bodies with her. <laughs> <laughs> so how much do you expect, uh, <laughs> the clones to learn about Project Necromancer, uh, or, or how much uh, is this just about figuring out? You know, Omega probably has an enhancement like them, you know, and it's leading, yeah, you know, is or how do you feel about all that? I, I mean, this being the final season, uh, which we're we've said, hey, I'm glad they have a chance to take it home. Um, there is some business about shows being shut down after three seasons uh, that uh, we can talk about another time when we don't have somber business talks. But uh, <laughs> um, I, I am bracing for the impact of not fully getting the answer maybe I want. Is that mm-hmm. that makes sense? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like which would mean that maybe the story of Omega goes on, right? And 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 you can find a way to move that character forward. Uh, I, I'd be interested in that. This, this certainly, to me, wraps up the clone era. Certainly, era wraps up the prequel. Era. Not that there's not more stories and blah blah blah, but just having this spiritual conclusion to what we spent seven seasons uh, working through in Clone Wars makes a lot of sense to me. But this, this is not just connects to other stories, um, uh, not just connects to other big plot points. But I, 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 there's enough weight to it that I don't know if, if it's the end of the journey. But I think, uh, I think they're going to find out enough. Including, as we want to discuss, what the word M count means. Um, I just think I, I'm bracing myself for that impact of, of not yeah. of this series ends and I'm not like, oh, dots connected. Yeah, I don't. I, I, that might be in terms of our our understanding, just the only yeah. dollop of, of, you know, the emperor's perspective on Project M count that that, you know, cameras mm. not going to whip around and, and show us. <laughs> <laughs> freakish you know <laughs> half okay yeah <laughs> is it working yeah. it's just gonna be a picture of uh mr burns uh with the uh photoshop <laughs> palpatine head on it um <laughs> uh yeah i can see i can see a world where this is building to rex has this great clarity and omega has this great clarity yeah none of us are free until all of us are free we need to release our brothers from tantus but it being a sort of thing of uh, Hunter getting the understanding, maybe from Nala say that it's you. You can't just get your brothers out. You need to d- destroy what's down there in the catacombs, or Omega's mm. never free. 
and mm. this sort of like we don't need to understand what it is we just need to know a uh, hemlock's doing some creepy bleep in the basement and we can't our mission isn't complete until we destroy the creepy bleep in the basement because until then mm. omega will be a pawn and we're not letting her be a pawn she's a human with her own agency she's not yeah. a hot point in the emperor's story and we're gonna make sure of that Maybe it's headed in that direction. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, all roads are certainly leading to Tantus, so mm -hmm. there's a lot to happen there. Lot yep. to happen there. Yep. Uh, l uh, let's talk about M count. Yeah, because that was yes. Uh, yes. Was that another moment where, like, <sighs> come on, Rex? Like, I know all the clones have been around Jedi, but he was so close to Anakin, and you know, Anakin's. I'm sure other yep. people talked to. I don't think Anakin's going around talking about as many chlorine count, but yeah, I'm sure he's overhearing, you know, Plo Koon or uh, you know, Ahsoka yeah. say something about it, like. I'm pretty sure Rex knows the full word. So did you have a moment to like, say it, say no, it, Rex. I, no, say I went the, the other... full word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on team. Just say it. You cowards. Uh, but I just, I think I loved it. I think it wasn't like super, super meta to me, but it plays meta because of the conversations the fandoms had the last couple of weeks. Uh, so I, I took it as maybe the Jedi having, Maybe there's a lot of wrestling with it within the order, and that maybe mm. this wasn't just known. Uh, it certainly seems like Anakin at some point would be like, "That's why I have the highest midichlorian count." And Rex mm -hmm. going, "Don't know what that means, Seth, but <laughs> love it." Um, so I I thought it was both funny and also thought just interesting that yeah, this is a piece of information they don't have uh, that the word um, yeah, it's a little bit of hiding what they're actually doing. So mm -hmm. you know, does does Rex know what it means? But he's just like. Later on, he's like, oh, it was right in front of me the whole time. M, Hedichlorian. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. But I just really enjoyed it. I think I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Of, uh, I hope it comes up. But just the fact that, hey, this is the thing. In in story, these characters don't know everything that we know from Wikipedia. <laughs> they don't know. Yeah. I mean, I could be entirely wrong, but the way he reacted to it, like he knew what it was. He's like, yeah, I've heard yeah. that before. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. To me, it felt as, to me, it felt as simple as, he was like, I was expecting to hear some clone Camino talk mm -hmm. about why they wanted her. And I heard some Jedi talk. What's yeah. that about? Uh, you know, and that's I, I, I'm going to admit this. I'm going to read. Uh, also, uh, we're preparing later today to join Alex and Molly on Star Wars Explained for the Clone Zone. I'm going to I'm going to rewatch that scene, too, to make sure in the moments uh, I, that I'm reading it. Yeah, yeah. The, the way you're reading, I'm not reading it different from you, but just like how I'm, I'm going to focus on Rex. I'm going to stare at Rex this time. Yeah, and I'll watch it again too because I, I, this might be something where my own desires are influencing the way I am seeing something. Because it, it, it does, yeah, sure, sure, sure. But it does, it does track. Again, Rex hung out with Annika. <laughs> um, there's a pod racing poster on the wall. What is framed over there? That's my midi chlorine account. It's pretty cool, huh? Um, <laughs> this is the uh, slide that Qui Gon <laughs> emailed to. <laughs> Um. Yeah, but it 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 also makes some sense too. If he's if if Rex is like, uh, we can't talk about that right now. Okay, so yeah, F fully admit I'm going to rewatch it again. And, and how how you look at it can can frame exactly how you see it. Yeah, and discuss it. Yeah, I, I, that that might be a real fun sit down with uh with Omega because all the shots of her kind of when when she's talking about what's happening there is like kind of wounded and haunted by it and in the shadows. Yeah. like really really great. So I mean that might be a nice. Uh, sit down and, and have the talk with uh, Omega about what an M count is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Rex's like, well, I don't know. I really understand, but uh, it's something I heard the Jedi talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. But I, I yeah, Am overall, I though, I, I, yeah. yeah, I did just love the the, the M count being this word uh, mm -hmm. that, that floats around. It's great. Yeah. Uh, other thing, uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is early rebellion we've been talking so much mm -hmm. about project necromancer and it's uh you know inevitable setback in this era since mm -hmm. they're still working on it in the mandalorian uh, new republic age and still not getting it quite right <laughs> yeah. uh by time of rise of skywalker um but there's also the rebellion side of it of mm -hmm. so we talked a lot about that scene with Chuchi and Singh, and I think kind of how it set the stages for the idea of, of these two episodes. But there is also just that real practical plot level of what does Chuchi want to partner uh, uh, with Singh on? Because mm -hmm. uh, it seemed like she called that meeting. He risked coming out of hiding to have this mm -hmm. meeting. Uh, Chuchi's got the line of the Emperor's concern that planets and systems may unite and oppose him, which, of course, we know eventually we, they will. 
uh, mm -hmm. Singh also brings up the great point of like, well, we don't have any leaders to rally behind yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, which just makes you want to start leading, you know, listing future leaders. Um, yeah. Of course, just canon wise, it's fun to see Rio Chuchi. We of course know Singh and got introduced to him in his separatist perspective in the in the first season episode, Common Ground. Mm -hmm. um, so, how, did did you take this as a setup for we're going to get more early rebelling, uh, early rebellion storytelling as a part of this? Because uh, according to old Wikipedia. Chuchi's fate is wide open. She could sacrifice yeah. herself uh, in the Bad Batch era as yeah. an early rebellion leader, or she could pop up in Andor season two. Uh, you know, we don't know hmm. where she's going. Hmm. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm trying to really. I'm trying to. You're asking me why, and I'm trying to find out my value on this. But I, I took it as a, a tip of the cap to what's going on in the bigger picture. But these characters are pretty at this point, specific to Star Wars animation, right? So it's like including mm -hmm. them into the story going forward. I'm so curious. Yeah, it was uh, suddenly, was Chuchi going to be like, I got a guy that sells art to me that I think might be able to help as you mm -hmm. know, young Luthan Rail pops up around the corner. Uh, yeah, we got all the names that we're thinking of. We got the story, we got the delegates of, uh, what is the delegates of 2000 from like the deleted mm -hmm. scenes of Roger Sith that factor in a canon as well. I, I, I think at some point I'd love to have it all uh, uh, strung out on a string so I can track it track it because i think it's a fascinating story um but all that to say i'm saying it's a tip of the cap chuchi's words were very big to be continued mm -hmm. yeah and i think uh i think for me is like since they put that on the map i would love to have it followed up a little bit uh yes yeah. like we've talked about i think we we really enjoy the show being a tour of this era of mm -hmm. the empire's first crushing of the galaxy and i feel like the clones story continues in my mind to be about the possibility of uh, of one last big victory on Tantus to mm -hmm. to free all clones give them their agency you know we know Rex and and Wolf and Gregor go and retire eventually and like we can't take down the empire right now but we can we can have this victory so I, I'm also wondering if there's like a possibility of that for the early rebellion of you know, mm -hmm. Chuchi is attached to this clone underground. She is fully aware that the Senate is rotten, that the Empire doesn't mm -hmm. work. She's wants more independence. She's me. So is she? I wonder if there could be like, if she is trying to set up a fledgling rebellion, and it, and she has some minor victory, but it gets crushed. Crushed. And it's the sort of bittersweet of like, and from yeah. the you know, Mothma's watching this, the Bale's watching yeah. this, and it, it's setting them back. Right? It's like, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, mm, rail is in, yeah. and from the ashes comes Luthen to mm -hmm. get it, get it all, get that the little baby step that Rio Chuchi in Avi Singh started and got mm -hmm. crushed, you know? Yeah. And, and somewhere Sagar is going, I, this, this is why we got to, we just got to go fight him and, and who mm -hmm. cares who dies, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and the crowd goes boo and hiss on saw and tech uh, and all that history. I, I'm yeah. There's something, uh, you, you're saying I really like about, uh, an early move forward that's squashed mm -hmm. that, that, that forces, um, you know, Bale and Mothma to, to take a step back to maybe have some fear in what they might be doing. And, and they're still trying to play it, uh, I think correctly in the, the political world. And, you know, we, you know, jumped up Mothma and, and Andor jumped to, to Bale and, and Kenobi and that they still, there's a system in place that we're going to try to, to work within and that's our part of it, and then others are growing, and, and that that there's some fear that that, that emerges when uh, old Palpy shuts down this this early uh, mm -hmm. attempt. Yeah, and and maybe it's you know enough to kind of keep that story of of like they're talking about of Palpatine being able to get away with a lot, but still mm -hmm. needing a little bit of public opinion, you know, yep, to, to be on his side. And they're they're still talking about it in in a New Hope of if word yeah. of you know Leia's capture gets right. out, that could create sympathy, mm -hmm. you know. There's, totally. He's still playing politics. He, the, his whole thing is, like, can you please finish the Death Star so I no longer have to play any politics and just say, obey or I'll blow up your planet. That's the only <laughs> politics I want to play. You so know, true. and he does. He wipes out. That's when he wipes out the Senate. That's when he reaches the point. You yep. know, they're talking about what he what Palpatine does in A New Hope in this episode. You know, I yeah. So I would love to. Can we do a Star Wars short film that's just Palpatine getting the word that the first Death Star is ready to go? Mm -hmm. You know, the report from Scarif is in, and he's like, "Ah, now's the time." Give me a McDarmid monologue. 
Yeah, he does the risky business dance in the <laughs> former Jedi Temple. Yeah. Yeah. Celebrate yeah. him. Monster. Mm -hmm. Uh, other thing uh, for uh, sort of canon and lore is uh, all the clone uh, uh, history and and future that's that's going on. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it was really interesting that the first episode, like the cliffhanger, you know, the button was and Wolf is back. Like, I know I know a ton mm -hmm. of people love Wolf, but like yeah. just in terms of screen time, you know, like. He's, he's he's not that major you know but that's right, that's right. the nature of this show that like it's so celebrating uh the whole animated oeuvre <laughs> mm -hmm. uh that wolf a, a relatively minor screen time character in the clone wars but big in yeah. fans hearts is the big pop totally. at the end of episode one of this two-parter is that's true it, it's kind of cool i think yeah, I know. It's making me want to watch those episodes of, of Rebels again. I haven't seen them in a couple of years. So I want to mm -hmm. kind of explore those. That's on my list of things to do this week. Yeah, uh, I love it. And I get a little lost in the clone names. And I mean mm -hmm. that in a good way, meaning I, I, I even when I watched the Clone Wars as it was rolling out, I was focused on other things. Uh, maybe I'm part of the problem, overlooking the clones. But yeah, you know, you ask me my favorite clones. I don't know, Rex, Cody, I like fives, but I would struggle to remember the names. It took Clone Wars report here in this channel for me to just really go – Hey, that's a, that's a name I know and I'm rooting for. Um, mm -hmm. And and seeing the connections and Gregor, you know, in the Mieber Gascon episodes, right? Like like mm -hmm. all that kind of. I love I love that and I love the clone fans. Uh, whether mm -hmm. they're dressing up in the armor or anything like that, it, the, the, the the Wolf has his fans, and this is big for those folks. So I'm having fun enjoying that part of it. Yeah. Hey, if you want to collect action figures, the best thing you can be is a fan of of clones oh. because they actually mm -hmm. get made. Mm -hmm. um, did uh, I haven't found any confirmation, uh, but uh, did you take it that this was the monastery on Teth from the uh, Clone Wars film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did. I definitely did. Yeah, uh, I was going to look for some confirmations, but because there certainly would be other monasteries out there, with the mm -hmm. Bomar monks. But yeah, no, uh, you know, which is also fun going back all the way back to the film, right? Like all the way I back. Yeah, I, I meant to bring it up a little bit when we we're talking about the big themes because I think that is a part of what is great about this episode. Of they could be hiding out anywhere, and it isn't like a oh that character walked through the background and we know them from something else. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. the clone. If it's the monastery, if it is the monastery on Teth, great, that'd be my first choice. But if it's just another Bomar monk monastery on another <laughs> yeah, yeah. spire on another jungle planet that they know about, it still kind of has that same weight of. It's a place that started out as a monastery in ancient times, yeah. but it is known to the clones through their war waging across the galaxy. And now this is their base in this haunted, mm. destroyed, holy place. It, it, yeah. it, it's, it's got some weight. It's got some meaning. And if it is indeed the monastery on Teth, uh, to me, there's just this great contrast to the way that space is visited in the clone wars movie mm -hmm. um which is it's such a different time that the wars were young mm -hmm. and yes the wars were bad and you know many clones died and and all that but the way it was um communicated to us the audience is this is a fun part of the story we're telling a story about war and there's some weight to it but we're also having fun with this cool big action set piece and Great when scene, i think yeah. of teth is like it's a rock and roll drum beat kicking in the song yeah. yeah anakin and ahsoka and rex up to a point are joking and competing about getting up to the wall first it's yeah it's bright and sprightly and clear and and to me it evokes i mean obviously the, all of that was just the way the story was pitched to us the audience mm -hmm. but i almost absorbed that in rex's mind of like remember back so early on when a ahsoka was just a kid yeah, and I had such clarity of purpose, and I was running around with my brothers and with my my Jedi, mm -hmm. and just getting stuff done. And I didn't know I was a pawn, and now here I am in this hunkered down, broken, shattered place. Yeah, with you know knowledge, more knowledge, but like that that contrast was cool to me. Yeah, somber somber tone is it. Rex is like it's so somber around here. Yeah, no rock and roll <laughs> drum beats, just. <laughs> Sad horns, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's also interesting, I will say, because uh, I think that we this I thought Teth, I thought some shots of this showed up in the trailer. Mm. Uh, if I remember right, I remember these conversations at, at least. Um, what is time? But uh, I, I, I thought, well, part oh, great, we totally know where Venture's gonna show up again. <laughs> 
not 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 so much. But, nope, nope, man. She does not want to go back to Teth yet, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. So all the clones that are prominently featured in Rebels, uh, Rex, Gregor, and Wolf are now uh, all in play. Um, are you wanting to, is, is it enough that they're all in play, they're all alive, or do you want to get a sense of how <laughs> how they uh, ended up retired on Celos? Do you want a part of Bad Batch to be the, like, and this yeah. is the beginning of the sitcom spinoff of Rex, Gregor, and Wolf hanging out on Celos? Kind of, yeah. There's a lot of storytelling between it, obviously, but but them having to be pulled back into the fight, right? Again, I ha it's been a couple years since I revisited those those episodes to really get the details. I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, fishing for, for sand uh, worms and stuff like that. Uh, uh, but, you know, and, and, and Gregor being a little, uh, a little different, right? A little, little, little office Greg, rocker. Greg moment. A little wacky. Yep. A little wacky. Um, they're in a, a, a walker. Like, yeah, it, it, it you know, it, it I, I, I want to know how I'm, I, and this might, it might not, the show might get much like with even look at the rebellion or even a mega story that maybe there's more to tell, but I'm not expecting more to, more to come. I think the thing that I'm com compelled by is, you know, I remember some of the details and some that get discussed a lot about whether or yeah, not yeah. exactly what Rex says about Order 66 lines up and blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah, that's um, right. That's right. That's right. But I, I don't really care about that for myself. Mm -hmm. Same. Uh, what I care about is the spirit is uh, uh, Ahsoka has sent them there because they could really use their, their knowledge and their skill. And there's a yeah. vibe of like, we're out of the fight. We're done. Yeah. And it's not like mm -hmm. we don't care because they come back. Right. And, yep, you know, yep, yep. And, and, you know, Rex really steps up. They all step up. Gregor dies, yep. you know, uh, saving Lothal. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I think that it's the emotional through line, the emotional canon that I'm interested in of yep. if is there a, a button to the Bad Batch series where Rex, at least I don't need him to go. Come on, Gregor. Come on, yeah. Wolf. <laughs> I've discovered Celos. I don't need that. I want <laughs> and he, the, and he goes. I don't think I'm going to shave today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. I can really feel the advanced aging kicking in guys. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. You know, no, I, I, I want the emotional canon of Rex saying enough. This is mm -hmm. what I can do now. Yeah. And now I now And now we deserve to live a life. Everybody go yeah. find your life. We deserve to live a life. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's the emotional beat. I'm curious if we will be a part of this story. Uh, I, 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 it makes some sense to me thematically and, and yeah, I do want, I, and I think we'll get that. Whether we get a series of, you know, like Rebels ended with a, you know, Omega has a monologue of here's where everyone went. I don't know, mm -hmm. but I, yeah, I, yeah, it's curious. I'm yeah. curious. Uh, any other canon or lore connections you wanted to discuss? No, no, you hit it all. Uh, I, I, I was, I put the Shadow Clone ship in in canon because I'm going to add that into Star Wars canon as one of the cool ships I enjoy. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I had that uh, down in my anything we haven't talked about yet because that that was a cool ship, a great. stabby little triangle ship, little little stabby ship. Yep, little stabby ship. Loved it. Absolutely great. Uh, we always like to talk about favorite moments. We like to go deep on the big ideas, but there's also all of those little moments. Uh, that support the big ideas are just fun and cool. This episode, these episodes had a ton of action. So do you have any favorite moments, be they action, comedy, heartwarming, anything? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, in terms of action, I, there was uh, early on Rex still in his disguise. There was that great toss, grab the grenade and and <laughs> thing, roll, roll, grab, toss, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I kind of had, I was having a, a, a blueberry muffin and I just was like, yeah, I almost wanted to throw my, Muffin, like it was a great answer. It was a great little Star Wars moment there. Yeah, it's so great, especially throwing it, uh, the, the, both of them precisions to throw it through the slat and then yep. back out the yep. slat. It was so great. Yep. Yep. Rex is great. Yep. That. Love Wrecker's double head bonks. Mm -hmm. Anytime Wrecker does something great, I love that. Yeah. Wrecker got some good, good moments. Uh, mm -hmm. Not, not the focus of these episodes, but some good pops on this episode. Um, I'll put this in action, even though it was a little bit more kind of a build up intention. You mentioned the shot, but I love the clone operative just running through the background while records just obliviously chowing down on food in the <laughs> foreground. <laughs> I love that. I think I got that more the second time I watched it this morning. And uh, yeah, that was, that was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I also really liked Crosshair's uh, grenade gun. Um Mm -hmm. that you know there's a lot of great keeping mm -hmm. up with like he's training but he's not back and he's shaking his hand out it's clearly uh painful uh but i mm -hmm. love that that first time he was like I'll, I'll i'll take care of this you keep running up these stairs uh mm -hmm. he's not uh, precise enough 
So he just, <laughs> that's just a grenade boom. attachment. <laughs> and I, I know that's how you play video games too. Cause I'm often yep. like, I'm not a sharpshooter. I'm going to pick the grenade option and lob large explosives. Cause I'm not a precision player. Yeah. Can I burst through a wall like the Kool-Aid man? Yes, I will do it. Yes, I will do it. No, I love that. Yeah. And, and there's something to just a lot of the action and, and, and it definitely ties deeply into the themes, but Crosshair and, and, and the Shadow Clone just kind of knowing each other's beats, right? Is mm -hmm. it, it just kind of shown through in the action. Yeah, knowing each other's moves. Uh, I did like Crosshair Shadow managing to bullseye the pilot. Uh, pretty brutal, yeah. Pretty pretty. Pretty, pretty damn brutal. Yeah, yeah. That, that was nice. Yeah, I, it was good for you, Crosshair. I thought, sadly, is <laughs> a horrible yeah. explosion happened. He's, yeah, he's getting better. He killed that guy. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> what am I rooting for exactly? Um, the the whole the the fight and the sort of the futility of yeah, Crosshair ain't what he once was, and this this mm -hmm. clone operative has absolutely got his number. Was mm -hmm. you know there weren't any particular beats, but just that feeling through the waterfall fight was was really yeah. uh, painful and great. No, lo love the fight. Uh, great stuff there. There was one shot I love of the, uh, one of the grenades on the on the ground getting uh, lit by the flamethrower. Just a great little beat of action. Love that. Uh, you, you know, watch, I watched these at midnight last night because I ended up mm. uh, staying up late and, and I mm -hmm. really enjoyed them but didn't pick up on some of the uh, details and nuance. So I watched them again this morning and, and tracked that. I believe it's the clone Fireball, who mm. for me was the MVP of this episode. Because I believe it is a clone fireball who uh, comes in and says he's got the food. And he says, Gregor's recipe with a few of my own spicy modifications. <laughs> so it's clearly some weird recipe that Gregor made, you know, mm -hmm. having, you know, mm -hmm. been employed as a as a chef at from that guy Borkus <laughs> <laughs> in the D squad episodes. Right. So that tracks right. too. Uh, but then a guy named <laughs> Fireball is like, mm -hmm. good, weird recipe. <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. added my own spicy modifications mm -hmm. and then like, Oh, there's a problem. I'll pick up a flamethrower and yeah. accidentally end up lighting detonators. I believe that's all the same clone. If it is, what a way the fireball is a clone who was only introduced here in the bad batch mm -hmm. era, but what a way to earn your name. Uh, when yeah. there's a problem, I go have a flamethrower and I add extra spice to dishes. Yeah. I my love name it. is fireball. It's I hilarious. love it. You know, we got the Echo, that, that, you know, we know where that came from. We got other than I'm Fireball. <laughs> How'd you get that name? <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty damn great. Um, uh, you, uh, other other uh, moments, other comedy stuff, heartwarming stuff, anything like that? Yeah, the, heart, the Omega's toothpick's been mentioned not only by us, but others out there. That is great. And it called back to some of her uh, mimicking of, of, of Hunter. Uh, and Fee at one point, too. Yeah. And Fee, that's right. Yeah, and it's, it's definitely part of her and part of uh, growing up. And, and, and I think that's uh, an important little thing. Uh, a couple of record moments for me. Yeah, record food. It's, it speaks to, the, you know, speaks to my heart and stomach. But uh, I love the, they don't look happy to see us, just like old times. Uh, I, you know, just love that first, the pilot episode of them kind of showing up. Uh, Caleb mm -hmm. Dune's excited, but everyone else is like, oh, boy, here comes the A-team. Uh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like that the regs were the kind of like, oh, yeah, they don't yeah, like it. But us weirdos regs. come in. Yeah, yep. it, was, yep. it was great. And that was a great moment. Mm -hmm. um, I, this was not intended to be comedy, but it amused me. Uh, when Hauser's initially not trusting uh, Crosshair, and he says, you expect us to believe he was held on Tantus for months, but doesn't know how to get back there? Mm -hmm. um, we, we got a uh, question from one of our patrons about exactly that. Of how did Crosshair and Omega not know how to get back to Tantus? And it, it just sort of, um, every once in a while, I think, like, a character asks one of the kind of logic mm -hmm. questions that a lot of us Star Wars fans ask. Mm -hmm. And it's funny to be like, it's a totally legitimate thing for Hauser to wonder. It's a totally legitimate thing yeah. for him to ask. <laughs> then I, it also feels like I posted this on, on Star Wars Reddit too, because <laughs> I want an answer to this logic question. Just kind of cracked me up. It's in my Facebook group, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, don't worry. She only bites half the time was a nice little mega line about Batcher. Yep. Yeah. Batch yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, ba and Batcher had a couple good action moments too. Right mm -hmm. after that wrecker head bonk, she does a, a leap. That's great. Yeah. There's a there's a real quick shot I noticed because I was trying to see identify who a clone was of Wrecker pulling Batcher out of harm's way. Mm -hmm. 
in the fight and yeah. it made me think that they're they're trying to continue the fear that something bad yeah. happened to doggy yeah it's hurting me it's it's, yeah. it's stressing me out it's stressing me out <laughs> Uh, I got just a couple other. Do you have uh, more moments you wanted to highlight? Celebrate the only one. The only one I'd say is that it, it, in, in the uh, continued tradition of Star Wars modern am, an, animation um, and anything Filoni has uh, even a name nearby, uh, the ships coming in. There were some great ships arriving moments here when the two drop ships are coming in to, to Tath. It just was a real Star Wars look up in the sky. Here they come. Yep. Really loved it. Mm-hmm. Big long landing when the when the batch gets there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, love a lot of beautiful shots. Uh, I, I yep. love the shot of the like I said of the the two ships at the end kind of facing off with their light pouring out. Um, only other thing for me I, I wanted to highlight was uh, I, I think we never get as much echo as I want, but I think he's had some really good moments, really connecting with Omega, really seeing her and validating mm-hmm. her. Um, he had that great moment uh, yeah, in the previous the, the episode talking about like, hey, you um, you got out of there alive and that's what you needed to do. You know, the one step mm-hmm. at a time, kid, uh, and getting her the upgraded crossbow. You know, and I so loved love tracking it. it in the first season where that was sort of like she's trying to figure out like, well, all my brothers have a thing. What's mm-hmm. what's my thing? I'm going to have a crossbow. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. And it's him just like validating her. And like yep. you, you had a trike. Here's your 10 speed Schwinn, <laughs> you know, like you're getting to be a teen. You need an upgraded crossbow, you know, I love that. Was really I, love, and she, I love that. She pulls, she kind of gives it a little, like, like she's, she's ready to play. It's so cool. Like, yeah, good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Get it out. Uh, final one for me. I already mentioned it, but it, it is, it's a triumph of delivery in a show uh, where one actor is talking to himself for large uh, swaths mm-hmm. that the, the scene of Crosshair showing his empathy and his concern and his fear for Omega's safety by checking in on, on everything was, was great. And if, if the line had just been got you crossbow, mm. but there is just yeah. some uh, a extra emphasis put on gotcha crossbow. <laughs> it sounds like he's advertising <laughs> a beer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It sounds like the end of some, you know, ad for at the, it's the end of the day and there's a beer called crossbow. Gotcha crossbow. <laughs> gotcha. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, heartwarming and funny. Yeah, indeed. indeed. Was there anything in these episodes that you disliked or questioned? In terms of decisions, the art of it all, the stories, the themes, and how it's playing out, you know, they're they're stressing me out with uh, Batcher a little bit here. A couple, only two tiny moments I put. They're not even. They're they're more humorous, uh, in, in my mind. Of uh, you know, Rex, you got to be more careful with your words. You you don't tell Wolf, who's clearly got some damage to his eyes. Open your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a Wayne's World 2 moment here of, uh, oh, um, so. <laughs> I had not picked you know, up on that. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a problem I have with the creators, but with Rex, yeah. I think. Uh, also, they used the Wilhelm scream um, in a weird way that almost took me out. And I thought that was funny, but it's, a, it's, it's, uh, the, they fall, the ship gets shot, right? The pilot, I can't remember the exact moment now, but they use the Wilhelm scream. And I was just like, I, I don't know, maybe we do need to move past it. I, it, it was funny in its own way, but I don't know. There, there's a reason it has been retired, I think. It, yeah, yeah. As much as I love it, I think it needs to be messed with or buried deep in the yes. background. Uh, but that was, that was, My, yeah, nothing. Yeah. That was pretty out there. Uh, yeah. pretty out in the open Wilhelm scream. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah, and we had the great sound uh, a couple episodes ago that uh, it sounds like it has been uh, confirmed from David mm. Collins that it is the new Wilhelm, so we can all oh. be hunting for that uh, noise that uh, the trooper who gets blown away by the engines uh, when Crosshair right. and Omega yeah. leave. It's great. Um, no, I think the only thing uh, uh, for me um, was, I think it's good that these episodes did came come out together. I really enjoyed them. I think mm-hmm. just the first episode would have felt a, a little light, a little incomplete. So I'm, I'm really glad that they presented them together because I think as, as a whole, mm-hmm. they were really strong. Um, mm-hmm. And the other thing, like I said, I have so much trust in these writers. I, I, this is just me being nervous, a little nervous about this clone operative buildup of the, yeah, that, that we're maybe setting up a little bit uh, more of a, uh, what is the answer? Who is it than is intended just because 
Yeah. We've been through that in the fandom with Star Wars, with Marvel, with kind of fans accidentally uh, taking a lead that's maybe not intended by the creators to make a bigger emphasis on the yeah. answer to a question rather than the mm -hmm. why. So the, 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 the clone's helmet not just coming off kept making me like just, we're building this up to watch. Uh, you know. And again, not yeah. a criticism really, just me being very honest about being like, I don't want to go through this again. No, sometimes we as a fandom wrap up our own mystery boxes, you know, mm -hmm. and say here. Yeah, it's not creators, so let them tell the story. There to to you your point of, of, of these episodes seven and eight, and I think we touched upon it a little bit up top, but just, yeah. You could you could have a mid midpoint expectation of something kind of big. I watched the first episode last night. I just happened to kind of be up just enough to watch the first one on my phone in my bed, like a like a, a kid at fourteen. Like mom and dad don't know I'm awake. I watched that, woke up, and you know something. You want to avoid social media. You don't want spoilers. Blah blah blah. But you know sometimes you're either on it by habit or you have to. And I had to be on it. And I was like, I was expecting even after seeing the first episode, I still had hope for the, in that second episode there'd be some reveal that would be blasted all over social media. That I'd be like, oh, okay. Ventress was under the mask, you know, which would not be the case. Yeah. But like, <laughs> so that when it wasn't, I was like, it, it, it didn't make the episodes feel small, but it just like, oh, this was a narrow focused section of episodes. And I, mm -hmm. I think I, that, I felt that as well. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, two great episodes in the big picture. Is mm -hmm. there anything that we haven't talked about that you wanted to touch on? You mentioned it. We'll do this in a wrap up of the series. Uh, it is uh, much like, hey, the, ep the the episodes are so beautiful every week. Uh, you hi you just highlighted a bit, but D. Bradley Baker. Mm -hmm. um, these are conversations with himself, <laughs> and ev I forget it every time. Every mm -hmm. one of these characters mm -hmm. is a character to me, uh, to themselves. I, 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 it, this is one of the great voice actor performances of all time i think and, and michelle ang right there with them is mm -hmm. so much hard to to make it they work so well together but uh you know do not <laughs> overlook for one second what he's doing in that booth it's yeah amazing. no i agree uh and i'll just shout out one more time we talk about how much we love the somber vibes and the the kind of glowing light in the darkness the flower in the concrete as jennifer had put mm -hmm. it um and i thought these episodes were just great for that the just the design the beauty of you know all all deep purple smoke on the water jokes aside that mm -hmm. combination of the the deep deep purple with the orange and the yellow and the the shadow and the uh, light and the richness and the detail that was also like what a contrast to <laughs> to a monastery in a jungle that we yeah. saw in the first clone wars film is you know it's it's oh, beautiful and it's the reason it works uh, mm -hmm. We always like to wrap up with a fun question about capitalism. If you could have a figure or merch of any uh, idea or character from these episodes, who or what would you want? Look, there's a, you're right. They make a lot of clone figures. There's a lot of options here. A Teth uh, Monastery Lego set. I'm there for that. I was trying to think out of the box. And what is something that I would love to have that's maybe a little bit more subtle? And it's the Chuchi tea set. The Senator Chuchi tea set. I don't even love drink it. a lot of tea. Love it. Yeah, I was thinking about that of like, uh, uh, you know, action figure fans. I mean, a couple of the action figure groups are just, you know, clamoring mm -hmm. for specific things, yeah. frustrated by repaints and reissues. And look, we yeah, gave yeah. him one extra bobble and now he's deluxe, uh, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> and still like we're, this December, we're five years out from Revenge of the Sith and still, you know, in the vintage line, not some major characters. So it would be really funny if they just leaned into that to me and like, you know, Black Series mm -hmm. Vintage, Avi Singh. They were making an Avi Singh yeah. action figure. <laughs> totally. Everybody's clamoring for an Avi Singh. Um, Love that. So that's the, my figure idea. My general merch is I really like this shoulder remote that the clone operative had. So yes, I would love just like, I know I could probably just tape my own remote to my shoulder, <laughs> but I'd love it if it is like, yeah, I tap some buttons and my, uh, my Toyota Yaris starts down in the uh. basement. Hey, you know, we're almost there. We're almost there. You know, it's getting scary so close. close to that. So, so you know, close I'm with, that. I'm with that. Well, that is it. That's our big look at uh, the season uh, three, episode six and seven of The Bad Batch. Ken, do you want to let people know where they can find us? Absolutely. We're the Force Center podcast of the Force Center Center show and the force center channel we're a lot of things right now we're happy you're here with us you can find us on twitter and threads at force center pod you can find us on instagram as well and don't forget we're on facebook at force center podcast merch available at 
facebook.com slash user slash force center uh, as far as the podcast you can uh, find us wherever uh, podcasts are just search you'll find us you can support us directly at patreon.com slash force center as for me I'm at Ken Knapsack. my website's kennapsack.com there you can get ticket information for upcoming shows Mark Ellis and I will be in Boston April 6th at the Rockwell tickets on my site and his site markellis.live if you want to go there Joseph you got a lot of good things going where can they find you and support you yeah, you can find me on most of the social media. My handle is at Joseph Scrimshaw. Uh, pretty much everywhere. Blue Sky, Threads, Mastodon, Toodle Honk. I don't know. There are so many. <laughs> there are too many. Uh, but uh, please find me on uh, social media. I enjoy the community, and I miss uh, some of it now that everything is scattered to the many various winds. Uh, you can also check out my blog, Finish Your Monsters. That comes out every Tuesday, and it is about uh, creative journeys and trying to set goals and move forward and hopefully uh, be honest about what I go through every week and inspire other people that you're not alone and you can make progress on the creative things or the life things that you want to do. That's called Finish Your Monsters. You can just find that by Googling my name and Finish Your Monsters. That is it. We have to wrap up so we can go talk about Bad Batch more right. on Alex and Molly's show, Star Wars Explained. We are looking forward to that very much. Uh, for now, this has been the Bad Batch Report. Thank you.